Hey, what's up everyone? It's Tom Spencer here. And today we're gonna to be talking about the new iOS 14 update and the possible impact that this update could have on your ability to run successful Facebook advertising campaigns. Now we're gonna be looking specifically within the context of e-commerce uh, and the Shopify platform. And I've got a great solution to this problem as well. So sit tight. So today, what we're going to cover, we're going to talk about the big fuss, what's it's all about. Now, you've probably read some news articles and there's lots of drama around this topic at the moment, but I just want you to know that you can relax. The problem is not as big as people are making out. And I think the problem largely stems from a bit of a misunderstanding about the technical realities of what's actually happening here. So in order to calm you down and help reassure you and also offer you a good solution, we're going to talk today about how the existing Facebook pixel currently works from a technical perspective. Perspective. Uh, and then we're going to talk about the solution uh, so that you can kind of uh, understand it fully uh, and come away from today um, with uh, a bit of a, a, a you know more positive attitude about this. So what's the deal? So iOS 14 um, is basically uh, a new kind of update on the Apple iPhone uh, and across iPad as well. Uh, and basically what it's going to do is it's going to ask people when they load certain applications if they want to be tracked. So it's an opt in to being tracked. Now, obviously, your first inclination to the question, do you want to be tracked is to answer, hell no, I don't want to be tracked, you know, because there's this kind of like conspiracy idea that it's all got kind of being fed back to the government and all this nonsense. The reality is a lot of people are going to opt out of this, I would have thought, but you know, ultimately, we don't know at this stage. So we are second guessing, but that's what's going to happen. They're going to say, do you want to be tracked? Now, specifically, what this means technically is that um, Facebook will no longer, for the people who opt out, have access to uh, a unique identifier that um, identifies uh, an iPhone. It's, it's, the, it's the iPhone specifically, not an account, so to speak. Now, the reason that's important is because it's the way in which Facebook uh, tracks that user around the internet. So, for example, if I go onto a Facebook ad and I uh, watch something, or if I um, look at a, a product, for example, uh, then I come off Facebook and I go and watch a YouTube video or I do a Google search or whatever else, it knows, you know, and can kind of find you again on the internet. So if I want to retarget you uh, on another website, that's how it works. That's how it knows who you are. So from a retargeting perspective, it is actually a bit of a problem. You know, there is actually an issue here if your campaign structures rely on retargeting. Um, and the problem really is around attribution um, as well as retargeting, as I say. So attribution is basically just how we refer to um, what the impact of our ads are. So, for example, if I run a new Facebook campaign uh, and I get some purchases, I need to be able to see that those purchases are attributable to that campaign so that I can measure its success or failure. Also, it's important because Facebook needs that information to be able to actually uh, find customers uh, that are like the people that are already made a purchase um, so you know with more data the more powerful it becomes with less data obviously there's an impact in the ability to actually uh, find your target person now as I said before and touched on previously um, it's going to impact some areas and sectors and business models more than others um, luckily if you are a Shopify e-commerce business a standard e-commerce business where you're running Facebook paid ads uh, you know to your Shopify store there is a great and very very simple solution we're going to get into that now so before we do we need to just quickly look at how Facebook currently tracks how the pixel works so I've done a diagram here, which is hopefully going to illustrate to you this process so you can fully understand exactly what's going on here. So let's just take a scenario. So someone clicks on a Facebook ad and what happens is that loads up the in-app Facebook browser, just a, a web page, uh, if you like, uh, with your Shopify store. And what that does is it runs the code to create the images and the content on the page. Uh, and then part of that code is uh, your Facebook pixel. So when the Facebook pixel code runs on your page, when the page loads, that is then sending a message um, to Facebook. OK, but the problem is iOS 14 is going to prevent that for people who are opting out. OK, so if that event cannot be passed from um, uh, from the client's phone to uh, the servers, 
then obviously Facebook is not going to be able to use that information, attribute that information correctly, uh, and then you know issues can arise with uh, higher ad spend and all the problems that we've we've heard about. So the solution then to this problem is something called server to server API. So again, same scenario, someone clicks on an advert. This time though, the Shopify store uh, loads, but the event is actually saved on Shopify. Because don't forget, when I load my Shopify page, Shopify is aware of the fact that that page has been loaded, as well as Facebook and as well as the, uh, the iPhone or whatever else. And so that information is then stored on Shopify. And the great thing then is that that's kind of outside of the boundaries of the iOS update or Apple or whatever. And so what can happen is, the um, server from Shopify can then communicate directly with Facebook and send that same information um, straight to Facebook. So you can see here that the, the loop is then closed. So if somebody clicks on a ad on Facebook and they load up their page on Shopify, instead of the client or the mobile phone having to then send the request out directly to Facebook, which could potentially be blocked. Um, all we're doing now is saying, right, Shopify, you now store that information, and you know, at a later date, uh, take the information from Shopify and pass it across to Facebook. Now, hopefully that makes sense to you. All we're doing is basically changing it from the client sending the request in an iPhone to Facebook to Shopify storing that event on their own servers and sending it directly to Facebook. So iOS 14 cannot block um, communications that are outside of you know, the iPhone or the app within the iPhone's capability. So I hope that all makes sense. So the next question is, how do we actually set up server to server API. You might be thinking, oh, you know, that sounds really complicated. I don't know how to set this up. Well, you're in luck because it's actually really, really straightforward to do this. And we're gonna jump through exactly how you do that now. Right, okay, so if you head over to the Shopify app store and just simply search for Facebook, uh, what you're going to want to do is click on the Facebook channel and then actually install that into your Shopify store. What that's going to do is on the left hand side here give you another option in your sales channels and it's going to install uh, the Facebook shop and some other applications and things that are required. But all we're concerned about really is heading straight over to settings and linking up all of our accounts uh, and connecting our Facebook uh, ad accounts and pages and business manager. Now once that's all connected you can head down to data sharing settings and here is where you have the option to set up as we touched on before server to server API. Now Facebook have actually called this um, API the conversions API or in fact I think it might be uh, Shopify who've called it conversions API but nonetheless doesn't really matter uh, all this is doing is referring to the same thing which is server to server data sharing now all you've got to do is select the um, the extent to which you want data to be shared uh, I've selected maximum because I want the most amount of data to be passed across because from an advertising perspective you know why wouldn't you uh, and then that is automatically going to uh, add any event data to your existing pixel, okay? So if you're worried or concerned about your existing pixel data and the existing data you've collected, don't be, because all it's gonna do is increase the effectiveness of your current pixel. So as we slowly start to see the potential impacts of the iOS 14 update, uh, we will also start to have an increase in the use of this server-to-server -server, uh, communication. So that's pretty much it. It really is very, very straightforward to fix this situation that we have with the iOS 14 update from uh, the perspective of being able to register and attribute the um, uh, events that people carry out on our website. So hopefully that gives you some food for thought and some steps that you can take in order to uh, help address this potential problem. Thank you so much for listening. If this has been uh, helpful for you, please don't hesitate to hit the uh, subscribe button. We're trying to get to a thousand viewers, so we'd really, really appreciate it. If you've got any questions, uh, sorry, a thousand subscribers, so we'd really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you've got any questions or anything else that I can help you with at all, please don't hesitate to put a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out. Um, thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.